as long as we do. But they both knew it wouldn't be the same. When rehearsals began for the special Christmas morning service, Brother Heinrich stood in front of the choir, beating time with a twig and singing very loudly. They practiced hard every day, but somehow nothing seemed to go right. Everyone was Sigismund. Soon the monks in the choir started to complain. Nothing but the same old carols year after year, they muttered. Write us a new carol, cried everyone. Oh, except for Brother Ignatius, who'd been in the choir for 50 years and preferred the old carols anyway. But I've never written a carol before, said Brother Heinrich. Well, you'll just have to try, said the others. A new carol, that's what we want. And off they went to the bottling shed. So Brother Heinrich cut himself a new quill, laid in a supply of fresh parchment, and sat down at the desk in his little room to try and write his new carol. He tried and tried. All sorts of ideas came into his head, but none of them was quite right. Sigismund looked at him sympathetically. <sighs> Christmas Eve dawned miserably. All day, Brother Heinrich scribbled frantically, while Sigismund, whose work was over for the season, sat in a corner watching anxiously. By the evening, there was still nothing on the parchment but crossings out. It's no good, Sigismund, he said sadly. I'll have to give up. Oh, come on. Time for bed. Slowly, they walked across the courtyard towards the stables through the bright, starry night. Stop a minute, Sigismund, said Brother Heinrich. Can you hear something? Sigismund stopped and pricked up his ears. Then he shook his head and walked on again. Brother Heinrich stopped him. Sigismund, there is something. Listen. It sounds like singing. It was singing. At first, neither of them could see where it was coming from. Then, as it drew nearer, they did see, and they couldn't believe their eyes. Just in front was a big circle of very bright light, so bright that at first they were dazzled. Then, as they got used to the light, they saw what it really was. Angels! more of them than you could ever count all shining white dancing in a ring and singing singing Sigismund stood there amazed. Then one of the angels stretched out its hands towards them. At first they felt a little shy, but soon they too were whirling round, holding hands with the angels. Sigismund never thought he'd get excited about going round and round in a circle, but suddenly it was the loveliest feeling he could ever imagine. The singing stopped, the angels disappeared, and all that was left was Brother Heinrich lying dizzy and breathless on the ground with Sigismund beside him. Did it really happen? wondered Brother Heinrich. Oh, that was such a beautiful song. If only I could write a carol just like that. We could sing it at the Christmas service tomorrow. Sigismund, why don't we sing the angel's carol at the Christmas service? If I go and write it down now, we can practice it first thing tomorrow, and it'll be ready in time. I'll tell the choir the angels sang it to me. 
With Sigismund clip-clopping beside him, Brother Heinrich rushed back to his room. He sat down at his desk, dipped his quill in the ink pot, and started writing out the angel's carol as fast as he could go, sprinkling sand on the parchment every so often to help the ink dry. Faster and faster he wrote. thing had happened. He couldn't remember how the tune ended. He tried all sorts of different endings. But none of them was what the angels had sung. Oh, Sigismund wailed Brother Heinrich. I can't remember the last bit. The tune's no use without an ending. Was that Sigismund? Brother Heinrich clapped his hands. That's it. Now I remember how the tune ends. Quickly, he wrote down the last bit of the tune in case he forgot it again. Then the two of them danced round and round the little room singing. The angels carol till they both fell asleep exhausted. Early next morning, Brother Heinrich ran to find the abbot. The abbot didn't believe a word of it, but he was so relieved that they were going to have a new carol, after all, that he said he would allow Sigismund to sing in the choir again, just this once. Brother Heinrich was overjoyed. He ran off to tell Sigismund, and they just had time to take their places in the choir stalls before the solemn procession arrived. The service went beautifully, and at last, the moment came for the angel's carol. <laughs> he knew about how you finished the angel's carol for me, said Brother Heinrich to Sigismund as he led him back to the stable. But Sigismund answered the same way he always did. That night, the two friends both went to sleep very happy and still thinking about their wonderful experience. They were sure of one thing. It had been the very best Christmas they had ever known.
Christmas, we, we secretly we um, made made a stocking for our mum and dad. We got these two um, colourful socks. Yes. And put presents in there. And you pretended that you were Father Christmas, did you? Yeah. Coming in. <laughs> there was a kind of note on it saying some poor little Father Christmases. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice for them, wasn't it? To turn it round for once and let them have the presents. Mm. What about you, Robert? What do you do on Christmas Day? Tell us your Christmas Day. On Christmas Day, well, I wake up. Yes. <laughs> That's always a very good beginning, right? <laughs> <laughs> what else? And, um, I usually have a stocking on my bed. Yes. And then go to church. Yes. When I get back from church, I have turkey lunch. It's my favourite part of Christmas Day. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> what about you? Yes. Um, for uh, Mum our mum's present we um wrapped up this cake and in the cake it was saying this kind of um riddle where the present is kept and we um put the present in where the bread's kept and and then she t um played the tape and she heard and then she went where the bread's kept and found the present was she surprised yeah. stunned i should think <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 